Welcome back. All right, it's power rankings time again. I actually, I was almost done the power rankings and I, I've had to start over. I kept getting ahead of myself, so I kept skipping to the wrong spot. And so when I did it the third time, I was like, okay, start over, take a deep breath and do a power rankings video. So 32 through one. Now next week is the final Saturday of the regular season. So I will do a power rankings next Saturday. I will probably do a power rankings the following Friday morning. And I'm debating about the last time that we did one sort of like that, we did it as a live stream. And I'm debating about whether or not I'm gonna do that as a live stream. Um, my wife's forgotten we did that as a live stream too. Cause I know that somebody said something about doing a live stream. She's like, oh, a live stream power rankings. I think that'd be, man, I, I can't see us doing that. And I was thinking we have, and we might again. So stay tuned for that. At any rate, 32 through one this week with one uh, week left, usually it's, week 25 currently but we're gonna have 27 this year all right must be the leap day right so this week at number 32 uh down from number 31 last week is san jose uh the san jose sharks just switched spots i might as well put up 31 while i'm at it because 31 is anaheim so for the last three power rankings these teams have just swapped every week they swap spots this week it was that anaheim beat calgary and um so Anaheim moves up to 31, San Jose drops to 32. And so, yeah, we'll see how it all turns out uh, at the end of the season with the draft lottery. Draft lottery, of course, will be this month as well. So that should be fun, right? Everybody loves the draft lottery. So would you like to see Anaheim win it or San Jose or we'll go through it. Uh, number 30, a team that I, I think would be fun if they won the power rankings or won the power rankings, won the draft lottery is Seattle. Uh, so Seattle drops one spot this week. Yes, they beat Anaheim again, but outside of Anaheim, they've, they've been struggling to get wins. So uh, they have three wins over Anaheim in the last few weeks, but that's why they're 30th and Anaheim is 31st. Uh, so for Seattle, uh, this is a, a setback after last year was quite the advance for them. We'll see how it goes for them uh this off season and what the plan is do you go out and get a bunch of young guys do you go out and get draft picks or do you just decide you're going to you know tool like build up your team for a run at the playoffs next year i'll be interested to see what ron francis does number 29 this week dropping one spot from last week is arizona so they did get the win over vegas uh but arizona up until that game had won i think it was eight out of their last 30 or eight out of 22 or something i think it was eight out of 30 uh, and so for Arizona, uh, it's been a rough second half of the season. That that went over Vegas, though. That was just this weird thing that takes place. Six goals in nine minutes. That's insane. Uh, so Arizona drops because a team passed them, too. So this isn't that Arizona had a bad week. And I'll explain that because number 28 also drops one spot from last week. And that's Chicago. So Chicago didn't have an awful week either. Uh, Chicago, of course, nowhere near a playoff spot. They're winning enough games that it might make you concerned about the draft lottery, but don't worry. If Chicago wins the draft lottery, everybody's going to have a real normal reaction to that. So Chicago drops the one spot because a team passed them this week. Uh, the team that moved up three spots from last week to pass all those teams is Columbus. Uh, Columbus, I think, is playing relatively well down the stretch here. Of course, there's no pressure on them. But it's nice to see. Like tonight, six goals in that game against Philly. All of them from defensemen. That's great. That's absolutely great. Uh, it's nice to see Wierenski having a good finish to the season. There are some good stories there. And Jet Greaves is, has definitely emerged as a potential goaltender for them next year. I could see Tarasov and Greaves being the goaltending duo. I could see that with Columbus. Uh, but that being said, they did move up this week three spots to number 27. Uh, number 26, dropping three spots from last week is Calgary. Now, I don't think Flames fans are going to be mad that they're in the bottom row. Uh, I apologize if they are, but uh, yeah, the Flames, not a fantastic week. They've lost, what is it, eight out of nine now? Uh, and it's just, it's after deadline. Like, it, it makes the record look a lot uglier than what it, it really is. Uh, it, it does. Uh, after the deadline, you see some teams really fall apart. And then in the offseason, all you hear about is, oh, that team was 30 points out of the playoffs. Uh, yes, but. And so that qualifiers there with Calgary. I think if Craig Conroy comes out this summer and decides to be aggressive and try to build things back up, I think people would react to that positively. Because I don't think Calgary's a bad team. They just they did, haven't had a great year. Uh, number 25, moving up one spot from last week. 
Montreal. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens, I think, are going to be better next year. Um, really, really excited with Slavkovsky's uh, really emergence now as being the forward that they drafted him to be. It turns out you can't write a guy off when he's 18. Uh, fans like to do that. I know there's some in the media that like to do it, too. I've always found that weird when they're like, yeah, this guy looks like he's a bust. He's 19. What? What in the world? Just imagine you're at like you're at commencement, you're at your graduation, and a guy shakes your hand and gives you your diploma and goes, you know it's all downhill from here, right? Now, I mean, just because somebody told me that when I graduated. But anyways, uh, yeah, number 25, Montreal moves up one spot, and I, I think Slavkovsky and what they've got built there, I, I think this, this next season could be interesting for Montreal. So that's the bottom row, the one that usually has the least amount of arguing. Um, there are two Canadian teams at the top of it. There's two California teams here, and of course the Coyotes, and all these teams are eliminated from the playoffs. Number 24, dropping two spots from last week, the Ottawa Senators. So they've followed up a winning streak with a losing streak. This has been the storyline that the Ottawa Senators have gone through this year, and usually the losing streaks have outpaced the winning streaks, and thus you end up with a team that's mathematically eliminated. Uh, Ottawa's going to be an interesting watch come off season two because you have a general manager with his first off season where he can make some radical changes and Ottawa needs to be better next year. Like I, I, I mean, they, they're, they're trying to get the new arena, right? And they're, they're trying to make sure that their fans stay invested in what they're building. You have to get better next year or you're going to see the attend. I think the attendance in Ottawa would drop off precipitously if this team gets off to a really rough start next year. And I, I don't know that I would blame them. Uh, number 23 on the board, dropping three spots from last week, the Flyers. Now, there may be Flyers fans who say, hey, we belong 32nd. And I, I'm going to say this, they're trying. Uh, the, the Flyers, I, I, I don't know that I've ever stood there for a preview video, worn a jersey, and the team that they were against said, I have absolutely no faith in them winning the game and not have have meant it facetiously or kind of like tongue-in-cheek no i just the flyers look like they're done and i don't know if it's that the system that john tortorella employs has exhausted them maybe they, they just don't look like they have anything left uh people want to bury the goaltending but the defense uh, their their play in transition they're just they're not the same this flyers team was hard to play against for about the first 50 games of the season and it's just it's disappeared and so now it's the job of Danny Breer and John Tortorella to figure out how to fix it. they got to fix it for next season. Uh, number 22, moving up three spots from last week. You know, I said this the last time Buffalo moved out of that bottom row. I said I felt bad for Buffalo fans. Here we are again. Uh, Sabres fans have their hopes up. I, I don't because Pittsburgh's playing well, the Islanders are playing well, and both of them are four points ahead. Um, well, one of them's four points ahead, and I think I think the Islanders are six points ahead of Buffalo. So they just have one spot they're chasing. Like the Metro teams have two spots they're chasing because third's right there too. Uh, I just don't think Buffalo has enough runway left to make the playoffs. The same issue they had last season. So again, in the off season, we can talk about it. I'm not going to get my hopes up that Buffalo becomes a playoff team next year. I, I can't. My heart just can't take it. Uh, number 21. Same spot as last week for the New Jersey Devils. So the Devils stay in the same spot as last week. Uh, really, it's just it's one up, one down. It's not that far off of what Buffalo does, right? One up, one down. They, they win, they lose. They win enough games to stay mathematically alive. They lose enough games not to get above the playoff line. And so for New Jersey, they're winding out the season. They would be in the playoffs if, if they just had a little bit better defense and a little better goaltending this year they would be a playoff team. So definitely some questions to be asked in the offseason. Uh, number 20, dropping one spot from last week, Minnesota. Uh, so the Minnesota Wild are not making the playoffs this year. I will be interested to see what Bill Guerin does in the offseason. Like the fact that Marc-Andre Fleury is open to coming back, I think that's that's great. However, the numbers would indicate that I think you're better off for your Minnesota to go with Gustafson and Walstead next year. And so that's... That's going to be the first interesting decision for the Minnesota Wild. And then I think with Huznadinov, I think next year you want to move him up the lineup a little bit. He's got his, his feet wet right now playing on that fourth line. Um, but you want to move him up, see what he can do. Uh, so, yeah, Minnesota's got some some interesting choices to make in the offseason. Most of it related to good young players, which is promising, right? 
And of course, you want Spurgeon to be back healthy next year. Who knows what would have happened if their blue line had stayed healthy. Number 19, dropping one spot from last week, the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, the Red Wings have had their issues recently with staying above the playoff line. Currently, they're below it. They only drop one spot, same as Minnesota, because somebody passed them. There's a team that rocketed up the power rankings this week. So Detroit ends up dropping a little bit. So does Minnesota. Uh, but for the Detroit Red Wings, um, hopefully hopefully they can make it. Tomorrow they're at home against Buffalo. So I'll be reviewing that game first. Uh, and we'll see how that one turns out. Whether Buffalo keeps their faint playoff hopes alive and helps to sink Detroit's, or if Detroit gets that win, maybe jumps back above the playoff line. They're so close. Uh, number 18, dropping two spots from last week, St. Louis. Uh, the St. Louis Blues, it has been quite the season. At times, it looked like, you know what, they could get into that wild card spot. And then Nashville got a lot better. And all of a sudden, St. Louis wasn't in that wild card spot anymore. Mentioned it the other day, the fact that if St. Louis was in the East, they would be above the playoff line. Which then leads to people saying, well, but the East is much better than the West. Which is such a weird argument that we still have. I don't know that the teams that are, are just above that playoff line in the East are better than the teams in the West that are just above or below the playoff line. I think the conferences right now are about as close to even as I've seen it. Um, and so for St. Louis, they just... Not being able to beat San Jose being one of the reasons that they're going to miss the playoffs, that hurts. That just hurts. Um, number 17, dropping four spots from last week, the Washington Capitals. I want to throw in there too. Every now and then people will say, why don't you take off that sticker? Because there's nothing underneath it. It's just black puck. Um, and this is these are all double-sided. So that's why the sticker's on this side because they're reverse retro. So I just, I, I don't like to use the reverse retro side every time. So the Capitals dropped seven spots, or seven spots. They dropped to 17th this week, dropping four spots from where they were last week. Last week, it looked like they were going to be home and cooled, and they were going to make the playoffs, and this was going to be interesting, and now, maybe not. Maybe they will. What day is it? What time is it? It, it? We're almost to the point where it depends on what time of day you ask somebody, and they'll give you a different answer about who's probably going to make the playoffs. But Washington has a winnable game tomorrow against Ottawa. They just need to win it. All right. So we move into the top 16, and right away, uh, at 16th, Pittsburgh. They move up eight spots from last week. Last week they were 24th. This week they're 16th. Uh, Pittsburgh, it has been a meteoric rise because all of a sudden they're alive. All of a sudden they're playing really well. And all of a sudden, Alex Nedeljkovic is the starter. Uh, I, I really, I think if I had told Penguins fans not too long ago, yeah, it's going to be Ned that's the starter, it would have been, oh, it's that bad, huh? And and I I know that a few weeks ago, too, uh, there was one of, one of the losses Pittsburgh had just the amount of Penguins fans I saw. Sullivan needs to be fired. Jari can't save a beach ball. Neither can Nadelkovich. This team needs to be torn apart. It's time for the rebuild. It's just it was comment after comment after comment. And, and now they're still alive. So it is amazing to see how quickly opinions can change. I know it's the internet. I've been on the internet since the mid-90s. I know how quickly things can change. But I, I'm, still, I'm still always mildly surprised by it. So, yeah, Pittsburgh moves up eight spots. Right now it looks like they're going to make the playoffs. We'll check in in a week and see if that's still the case. Uh, number 15, moving up two spots from last week. And suddenly the Islanders look like they're a playoff team as well. Uh, the Islanders have won four in a row. Uh, the Islanders and the Penguins are the two teams that seem to want those playoff spots right now. Uh, Washington's backed out. Detroit's backed out. Uh, New Jersey, Buffalo haven't managed to, to make the improvements that were expected. So, yeah, it might very well be the Islanders and the Penguins. And then the question becomes... What kind of team are you going to get with the Islanders in the playoffs? Will Patrick Waugh play that stingy style of hockey that Barry Trotz did to great success? Um, will he try something different? And is Varlama the starter? So there are definitely some question marks. I can't wait to do the previews for the playoffs. I love playoff time. Um, half the teams are gone. It's it's A, it's easier for me to track, and B, it's just every game feels so important. So I'm really, really anxious to get there which might be why I was jumping past teams the first time I did this power rankings. I have not done that yet. I just jinxed it. Number 14, Vancouver. Vancouver drops three spots from last week. So the Vancouver Canucks have not been great since the All-Star break. 
And everybody wants to blame a player. Everybody wants to blame this guy, that guy, this trade, that trade. I think the Vancouver Canucks overachieved in the first half of the season. I think that the PDO number that was mentioned months ago was unsustainable. That has dropped for Vancouver now. And what we have is a team that maybe isn't as good as their record, but I don't think they're as bad as they've been playing since the All-Star break either. So can they turn it on in the playoffs? It's tough. Some teams do. Most of the time they don't. Uh, so again, I've been enjoying the ride with Vancouver. Uh, it's not as much fun when the ride is down in the standings as it is when they're going up. But at any rate, for Vancouver, whether they finish first or second or third or wild card, uh, wherever they end up finishing, it's a playoff spot. And it's something for Patrick Alvin to build on next year. And I'll be interested to see what that team looks like next season because there's definitely some room for improvement on the squad. Uh, number 13, moving up one spot from last week. They kind of had to. LA. I, I couldn't in good faith have the LA Kings behind Vancouver with the way Vancouver's been playing and then the fact that LA has has beaten them and made it look relatively easy both times over the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, LA. I mean, now I know Vancouver, you know, they pulled the goalie and they almost came back and tied it, but I really didn't have any doubt with that one. And tonight's game, I didn't really have any doubt either. So the LA Kings... Um, right now look like they're going to be a dangerous team come playoff time. And if that ended up being the matchup for Vancouver, well, it's it's been a fun season. Enjoy the ride while it lasts. Number 12, same spot as last week, Vegas. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights staying in the same spot as last week. And, and for Vegas, it has been a very up and down season for them overall. I will be fascinated to see how they bounce back from that loss against Arizona. They have a couple of big games coming up this week. I believe they have Edmonton and Vancouver on the road. So that'll be fascinating to see how that turns out because that could go a long way to deciding where everybody finishes in this playoff hunt in the Pacific. Um, but yeah, Vegas really, um, I, I, they're going to be dangerous come playoff time. We know that. Even if Mark Stone didn't play, they're still going to be dangerous come playoff time. Uh, number 11, moving up four spots from last week. Winnipeg. So the Winnipeg Jets move up four spots from last week. Uh, the Jets have been up and down. They've gone through their down phase. Now they're back into an up phase. We'll see how things are for them going forward. They're still within shouting distance of finishing second in the division if Colorado's recent struggles were to continue. But we'll talk about Colorado when we get there. We're obviously not there yet. But Winnipeg's playing well, and that's all you can ask for if you're a Jets fan with the playoffs around, around the corner. Uh, number 10, dropping five spots from last week. Nashville. Uh, the Preds losing some games in regulation now um, and, and just continuing to do so. They had an 18-game point streak. Were they as good as that streak? Probably not. Are they as bad as their losing streak? Probably not. So the truth somewhere in the middle. I still think they're going to be a very tough outcome playoff time. I, I don't think teams are going to be all happy to get the Preds. So for Nashville... Uh, this, maybe they don't get back into the top row this coming week or the week after, but they're still top 10. They're still top 10. The playoffs are right around the corner. Uh, number nine, dropping three spots from last week. Florida. So the Panthers drop out of the top row, but I was, it, from a Florida perspective, you should be encouraged by how they played against Boston today. And the fact that I, I do think they're coming out of it. Even that game against Toronto, they lose that game against Toronto. Um, some breaks here and there that just didn't go their way. I, I really think Florida's going to be fine come playoff time, and they're they're going to be rough to play against. They're not going to be an easy out. Uh, home ice advantage should mean something for Florida. And so, yeah, they're outside of the top row, but they could easily be back in the top row next week. Uh, we move into the top row, and at number eight, moving up two spots, Tampa. So two Florida teams, one after the other. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning would have been cheering for Montreal tonight. Uh, Toronto won, though, so Tampa Bay's uh, hopes of catching Toronto. I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna do it or not, uh, but it would be really interesting to see a Florida Tampa Bay first round matchup. But either way, uh, Tampa Bay is not a team anybody wants as a wild card. Just imagine you won your division, you've had a great season, and in the first round, oh yeah, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. You get Kucherov and Hedman and Stamkos and Vasilevsky and Net. They have uh, two Stanley Cups from 2020 and 2021. 
uh, and a finals appearance in 2022. So they're, they're not going to be an easy out in the first round. And they are playing their best hockey with the playoffs right on the horizon. Number seven, same spot as last week for number seven. The Edmonton Oilers. Uh, so the Oilers stay in the same spot as last week. Uh, up and down results overall, but they're still they're within three points now of first place in the division. They probably end up catching Vancouver and, and getting first. I don't know if it's going to matter because if you win, it's it's not like you get an easier opponent. I don't think there's an easy opponent in the West. Um, I don't know that there's an easy opponent in the East either. I think it's great. I think I honestly think this this year's playoffs could be absolutely fantastic. I know we'll still see probably sweeps in five game series. But I don't know that there'll be easy series. I don't think we'll see like laughers and just a team getting annihilated in the first round or anything. Uh, and for the Oilers, if the Oilers end up playing Vegas in the first round or playing LA in the first round or Nashville in the first round, if they end up winning the division, any of those series I think would be fantastic. So Edmonton stays in seventh place because uh, number six this week, moving up three spots from last week, Toronto. Uh, so the Leafs are back in the top row. Um, I did see some consternation when they dropped out of the top row. And, of course, there's also people say, finally, he overrates the Leafs so much. But, yeah, the Leafs moved back into the top row. Their game against Florida was really good. They they looked really good against Montreal, too. Got off to a slow start against the Habs. Didn't panic, didn't change their style, and they still went out and won the game. So, Toronto's playing really well. Uh, I know the playoffs are a different beast. That's why I don't do power rankings for the playoffs, just for the regular season. But Toronto's winning games. Uh, they're putting putting themselves in a good spot to, as the third place team, you're starting on the road. All you have to do is win one out of two on the road and then hold serve at home. So that's going to be the task for the Toronto Maple Leafs come playoff time because they're not going to catch Florida or Boston. Uh, number five on the board this week, dropping three spots from last week. It feels like a dramatic drop, but it's not. Uh, so Colorado drops to number five. They're still top five. Uh, that 6-2 to two loss against the Oilers, concerning if you're Colorado, sure. But then you see Dallas lose against Chicago today. So now tomorrow, uh, Dallas is playing, or yeah, Colorado's playing Dallas, and Colorado's three points back at Dallas. So if Dallas had won against Chicago, they'd be five points ahead and a little bit of a cushion, but it's not there. So Colorado can bounce back. And the good news is if you're an Avs fan, they've beaten Dallas every time they've played them this year. Which brings us to number four. Number four is Dallas. Yep, Dallas stays in the same spot as last week. Yep, back-to-back -back weeks in the top five. Again, they're playing well. I did not bump them down for that loss against Chicago. Uh, they had actually moved up this week, and then the loss against Chicago means they ended up back and forth. So they had moved up, but you lose against Chicago, especially a spot them a three-goal lead. I Again, uh, they played well in that game, just the goaltending was not there. So... Um, I, I guess now Otter's the better of the two goalies at this stage. Uh, I'll be fascinated to see what they do come playoff time. If Ottinger has a struggle in game one, do you go to Wedgwood or do you just leave him in the net and hope he turns it around? Uh, number three, moving up five spots from last week. It seems late in the season for a team to move up that much, but Boston, man, uh, the Boston Bruins right now are playing really strong hockey. Uh, that was a good game between them and Florida today, and they came out with the win. And yeah, the the Boston Bruins just have been it, it's it's been something to watch this season. I did not expect them to start rounding into form again with the playoffs on the horizon, but they have, and I I think they're 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 going to be fun to watch no matter what happens. Really, in all honesty, I mean, think about this for a second. We are two weeks away from the start of the playoffs. Boston, Dallas, Vancouver, the three teams I cheer for are all in the top half of the board. It's a good time for me as a hockey fan. And uh, maybe this is a year where there's a happy finish to the playoffs for, for yours truly. I, I don't think it'll happen, but it might. You just never know. You just never know. Uh, 1999 and 2011. So, you know, and then, then the Canucks have had a lot of jerseys. Uh, so we move up to number two. Number two this week, moving up one spot from last week. Carolina. Uh, the Canes move up the one spot to number two. Uh, I do think that the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be very difficult to beat in the playoffs. I think their offense is going to be just fine. Uh, I think Jake Gensel looks really dangerous for Carolina. 
Uh, so yeah, this 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 could very well be the year where we see Carolina get that second Stanley Cup. The first one, of course, being in 2006. But uh, yeah, Carolina, the runner-up, which means first place on the board for a minimum of four weeks in a row. Because this sheet only tells me who's been number one weeks 23, 24, and this is week 25. And that's the New York Rangers. Yeah, the Rangers are... The one thing with the Rangers is this. They have a good chance of winning the President's Trophy. So that that's something you don't necessarily want. And I, I say that kind of half facetiously. Like, do players care? Do players Are there players in the National Hockey League that look at that and go, well, they're going to win the President's Trophy, so they're not going to win? And I'm not talking about, like, you know, Ranger players saying, oh, we're not going to win. Look at that. We're going to be first. But are there players on other teams that go, ah, well, they, they get the curse, not us. Um, or is that just media and fan-driven? But at any rate, the Rangers are the best team in the league right now. We'll see what they do come playoff time. And I'll see you guys again next Saturday night for the final power rankings on a Saturday uh, for, for the season. And then I'll have the power rankings on the Friday morning after, after the season is done. So stay tuned for that, of course. Come back for that. I know there are people who tune in just for my power rankings every week. So there you go. And uh, yeah, so let me know your thoughts as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon. I didn't mess up at all this time because I stayed cool and calm and I, I didn't try to rush. I think I was trying to rush the first time. Don't try to rush. You'll make mistakes. I will talk to you again. And I think that's why I misspeak a lot of the time too. I'm trying to rush through stuff and I don't stop and think. And then that's where you get yourself into trouble. It's, it's good advice for life too, not just for YouTube stuff. Uh, but thanks for your support. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. The channel passed 310,000 subscribers today. Thank you each and every one of you for subscribing. I will talk to you again soon.